Transmission lines actually require a lot of accessories to perform at their best condition. Each accessory is designed to target a certain issue and mitigate that specific issue, so that the transmission line is able to maximize their uptime and minimize their downtime. First, this is a damper. As the name suggests, it damps stuff. When the wind blows a line, it can sometimes cause the lines to be excited. I know, I know, I know, it sounds bad, but it's written right there. Don't, don't point a moral finger at me, okay? When it is excited, it will vibrate. Okay. <laughs> so, is the vibration bad? Vibrations can cause the conductor fibers to rub against each other or against the insulator joints, which can increase the resistance of the transmission line and cause power losses. That is not good. It can also cause the conductor strands to wear out. And if it breaks or snap, not only you will lose the line, but the transmission tower also relies on the tension to balance out the forces. So, the tower may actually collapse if the forces are not balanced out properly. This is a spacer. It is meant to keep bundles from touching each other. This is a single bundle, a bundle that transmits electricity. Then, engineers be like, what if... Since we already have the tower and the infrastructure, and that costs a huge chunk of money already, what if we just add another line onto it? Wouldn't that double our transmitting capacity? They realize it is a genius idea and think that they are business extraordinaires. Until the next guy came in and add a triple bundle. But why stop there? You can guess how wild the cost savings they think that they were going to achieve. Billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions. But having bundles close to each other may cause rubbing and scratching. The friction from rubbing may deteriorate the strands and the bare current carrying conductors. So there's where spacers come in to keep the lines parallel and not making contact with each other. No contact, no friction. No friction, no fire. Then, someone comes along and merge the two together, and you will get an equipment that functions as a damper and a spacer. Mind blown. They call it the spacer damper. Next, we look into the insulators. I've already done a quite a detailed video on insulators and how it is designed and glass toughening process. Link in the description below. This time, we talk about how the insulators are connected. V-string, defined by the V-shaped insulators connecting the conductors to the tower. These V-shaped design insulators are for windy towers, towers at location that experience a strong wind. They are designed to hold the conductors in place better. At the cost of an extra set of insulators, I-string, defined by the single shape of I-shaped insulators. Engineers begin to look into some value engineering basically another word for cutting costs, and decided that a single set of insulators is sufficient for towers that are not so windy and that are relatively straight. I mean, the line of the path is straight and not much turning angle. That's what I meant, not, not, not the other straight. You can go take your spaghetti sticks and, and, and mix spaghetti or something, okay? The technical term will be called a suspension tower. The conductors are just suspended, held by the eye string. These are cheaper, the piling, the structural requirements are also not that high, but they are mainly for towers with not much turning angles. Last of all, we have tension towers. When there is a larger turning angle, you will need a tension tower, because when you're not straight, there's a lot of tension going on. Shut up, shut up, you're gonna get cancelled. Oh my god, just shut up man, shut up. The conductors would join to the cross arm at a tower via a set of insulators. A lot of pulling tension. You would also require a set of clamps and jumper cables to connect the conductors between the lines. This design is for towers with more than a certain degree of turning angles, as this design needs an extra set of insulators and also higher requirements on the piling and tower structure. You know, those civil engineering stuff. Tension clamps. They connect the tension transmission lines before the insulators. The lines are energized, 
the tower isn't energized. The insulators prevent the energized equipment from spreading. Essentially, this line here and that line here are not electrically connected. That is where the clamps and the jumper cables come in to make the connection. It is important that the clamps are connected well. This is because joints such as clamps are prone to hot spots if the contact is loose or not well done. Hot spots may cause higher resistance and reduce power flow. That is not good. Suspension clamps. They are used in eye string setups mentioned earlier in this video. They just hold the conductors in a suspended manner. The lines is energized, so the insulators are here to keep the juices from getting to the tower. So you will need a way to hold the lines. That is where the suspension clamp comes in. Hotspots isn't really a concern here, as the function isn't really to help to conduct the electricity. Arcing horn. The arcing horn is attached over the insulators. It kicks in when there is a direct strike of lightning hitting the conductors. Instead of letting the flash oil run across the insulators and damaging it beyond repair, the arcing horn provides a path of the lightning charge flash over to go to, avoiding using the insulators as a path or as a collapsing bridge that needs to be replaced after every lightning strike. These are categorized as over voltage protection, but some transmission companies remove these arcing horns as they may cause nuisance tripping. Sometimes birds like to sit on it and then they poop on the arcing horn and that allows some path for conductivity. Yeah, yeah, those kind of stuff. This is a monopole tower. It has only one pole. They take up less space, but are more expensive to implement. They are used in areas where space is limited. This is a lattice tower. They take up more space and it is more affordable to implement. FYI, this is also a lattice tower. It is just a single circuit lattice tower since it is only carrying a single set of red, yellow, blue. Well, this carries two sets of red, yellow, blue. Then there are floats for planes to not come crashing in. The technical term for these are called marker balls. Then there's also tower paint for aircraft. Really? For aircraft as well? Yeah, apparently so. I also have another video that talks about how well designed the transmission lines are. Check it out here. You're watching the Funsi channel. Do, 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 do.